Hello everyone, back to you to today's third video. We're going to have a look at the ECMDF Metro France and DWD long range seasonal models uh, for today's third video. We're at the Copernicus.eu website for this one, and we're going to go through the next three tri monthly periods starting with the summer, uh, June, July, August, and uh, we shall see what those um, charts are shown for you. And I'll get on that for you very, very uh, shortly. Just to say that the first video released today was the summer 2020 update. It's the last one uh, before the summer forecast is released uh, next Sunday. Well, it's the last analogs update. Uh, there will be one more season model router to be released on Saturday. But in terms of the analogs update, that's it. It's the last one today. So uh, have a look at it. It's on my homepage at gazweathers.com right now. And it will be placed on the summer updates page with a written summary uh, sometime this evening. I'm having a very, very busy day today, but I will get it up for you sometime. Uh, this evening, Gab this evening, Gazworth's Sunday Roundup has been released as well uh, today, so that's your Sunday afternoon eclectic mix of this and that. And at 5 o'clock, we're going to be live streaming uh, on YouTube. We're going to embed the video into uh, gazweathers.com and share it on all the social media accounts. But if you want to get involved in the live chat, then you will need to shift over to uh you need to shift over to youtube and get involved in the live chat uh there uh we could be uh taking as many questions as we possibly can and we're looking at later observations and uh we're also with this we're gonna have a look at the beijing climate center for the uh coming winter as well so that'd be quite an interesting uh live stream coming up this afternoon you see what the beijing climate center is forecasting um for uh, winter of 2020-21 in the live stream uh, later on. Right, so that's everything coming up and uh, that's already happened, but let's get on with this update. So as I say, we're at the Copernicus.eu website for this. We're starting with mean sea level pressure anomalies for uh, June, July and August uh, from Metro France. So for the summer of 2020, we see that Metro France is forecasting an area of above average heights to be centering from the Atlantic into much of uh, Western Europe anyway. It's not quite reaching up towards Scandinavia, and so that does leave us with some influence from the jet stream, probably doing something a bit like that. So it's not a classic hot summer pattern because we aren't getting the ridge right way up to Scandinavia, getting the high pressure up to there. If we get the high pressure up to there, then it would have linked back into the Atlantic ridge and uh, that would be a very hot, classic sort of summer pattern. As it is, we're probably still getting some influence from the jet stream. Not all that much, but we're probably still bringing the jet stream in to some degree, maybe on the periphery of it. Having said that, it's a very decent anomaly, really. There's a lot of dry weather to enjoy with that, and temperatures uh, are going to be warm as well. Moving through to the next tri-monthly period, which takes us through uh, July, August, and September. Uh, we're looking like this. So, again, we've got the above average heights out in the Atlantic. Still some above average heights extending into the UK, northern parts of Europe as well. Jet stream is pushed further northwards a little bit uh, as well. Again, quite a bit of dry weather on off with that, but it's just a little bit weaker. So it might be a little bit more unsettled as we go through to the latter part of the summer. But having said that, it's really, it's not a bad anomaly at all. And we we'll go through to the last tri month period, which is August, September, October, taking us into the middle of the autumn of 2020. And we look like this. So if anything, anti-cyclonic signals continue, really, above average pressure, high pressure, centering over UK and many parts of North Atlantic. There is some low pressure up towards Greenland. Doesn't look as though it would bother us too much. So quite an anti-cyclonic signal, really, over the next three tri monthly periods with... Um, Metro France on this uh, particular update. We expect a lot of dry and uh, settled weather to be involved with that. Sorry about that, everyone. I just had to stop and have a little bit of a cough. <laughs> but we're ready to resume uh, now. So uh, we're going to move on and have a look at the Metro France temperature anomalies uh, for uh, the next three trimethyl periods. So again, we're starting with uh, July, June, July, August, summer of 2020. And uh, we can see a warmer than average summer has been predicted through many parts of uh, Europe, particularly so for these more eastern and southeastern areas where in these red shadings, that's taking temperatures to between around 1 and 2 degrees above average. Up towards Scandinavia, it looks a little bit cooler there, near normal, no signal, or perhaps a little bit on the cooler than average side. And then over the UK and Ireland, we're kind of like half a degree to maybe 1 degree above average, as is much of western Europe. It looks like a relatively warm summer uh, coming up anyway with uh, Metro France. 
Next tri-monthly period takes us through to July, August, September. We're looking like this. Again, pretty hot over on the eastern side of Europe, so from Italy to the Black Sea. Uh, out in the northwest, we've got the temperature anomaly of around uh, half a degree to one degree above average again. So uh, not too far from average, but over on the warmer than average side. And then across northern Europe again, we have no signal or uh, it's near normal. And then we go through to the last trimester period, taking us through to August, September, October. Still overall on the warm and average side, maybe cooling down a little bit. You see how the orange colours are, expand, are expanding, and that's just a little bit above average, half a degree to one degree. The red shadings are, are diminishing. But overall, again, it's around uh, average to slightly above for most parts of Europe. Throughout it all, the UK and Ireland is sort of on the warmer an average side but not excessively hot so not not an excessively hot uh, summer being predicted here for the uk and for ireland for western northern europe the hottest conditions over on the eastern side of europe but still on the warm side really pleasant conditions i suppose through uh, most places this is the Metro France precipitation anomaly for the summer of 2020. And we're looking like that, really quite dry, actually, across many parts of Europe. A drier than average summer is being predicted, particularly so like for the central areas, but also up towards parts of northern Europe as well. Ireland and the UK is just about on the driving average side, but uh, maybe sort of closer to having no signal. But overall, it looks like a pretty, uh, you know, it looks like a pretty... Um, uh, dry summer coming up across many parts of Europe, indicative probably of a lot of high pressure. And the next dry monthly period takes us through July, August, September, and again on the dry and happy side through most parts of Europe, particularly so for northern, eastern, and southern parts of Europe. Again, we see for UK and Ireland, we don't have as much of a signal to be dry than average, but we are still on the slightly drier than average side. And um, then we go through to August, September, October 2020, and we look like that. So much of Southern Europe is uh, actually looking relatively dry now. It's dry through the bed, uh, and over as far east as the Black Sea, really. But out in the northwest, it does look a little bit more unsettled up there, especially so for parts of northern Scandinavia, so north Sweden, uh, north Norway, over towards Italy, just uh, a little bit on the driving average, uh, northern Iceland, I should say, just a little bit on the driving average side there. For the UK and Ireland, we're near normal or have no signal once again. So overall, this doesn't look like a bad summer with Metro France. A lot of dry weather on offer and uh, pretty warm as well. And that continues on into the earlier part of the autumn too. Let's have a look at the ECMWF. Again, this is mean sea level pressure anomalies. And it's showing, again, quite a nice area of above average heights centering over and uh, just to the western country and out into the Atlantic as well. Low pressure would be up here. Um, the jet will be up there as well. It's not a classic summer pattern, again, because we're not sending the ridge up Scandinavia. In fact, we probably have a bit of influence on the jet stream into Scandinavia. So it's not a classic hot summer pattern, but as it is, it's relatively dry, uh, you would have thought, and probably quite warm too. Uh, the next trimonthly period uh, with the ECMWF takes us through to uh, July, August, September. Again, very similar. The above average heights sort of over to the rest of the country and out into the Atlantic. Below average heights up to north. Jet stream is pushing northwards a little bit as well. So once again, probably a lot of dry weather to be enjoyed there. And the final trimonthly period with the ECMWF is August, September, October. And if anything, we start to see the high pressure intensifying. So uh, as we go into the autumn, actually, we begin to see the high pressure getting even stronger. And that will bring a lot of dry weather. Not necessarily all that warm, although I think it probably would be quite a, quite a warmish ridge, really. But certainly a lot of dry weather there as we go from the summer and into the autumn temperature anomalies with the ECMWF for uh, the summer of 2020 are looking like that. Near normal to a little bit above average for the UK and for Ireland or parts of Scandinavia. Again, near normal or no signal. Most parts of Europe looking pretty warm, around half a degree to one to two degrees above average. So quite a warm summer uh, coming up there with, uh, with uh, the ECMWF. Our next trimonthly period takes us through to July, August, September. And again, we're looking like this. Overall, for the UK and for Ireland, very much around average, near normal. You know, sort of half a degree above average, maybe a little bit more 
um, but not excessively warm, not excessively hot. Uh, Scandinavia generally coming out with no signal, so it could be a bit on the cooler side there. And then for the rest of Europe, it's kind of like half a degree to one to two degrees above average, where we've got these red shaded areas. That's where the warmest temperature anomalies are. A warm summer, yes, but not excessively hot seems to be the signal here. Uh, from both of these models. And then the uh, last tri-monthly period for temperature anomalies from the ECM Earth is for August, September, October. And again, we're looking at a warmest summer through southwestern parts of Europe, from Spain up towards France, and over on the eastern side of Europe. It's just slightly above average for Ireland and the UK, and then for Scandinavia, again, uh, very little in the way of a signal uh, up there. A relatively mild, quite warmish um, late summer into early autumn coming up there from the east end, but again, not excessively warm. And then precipitation anomalies from the ECMWF for the summer of 2020 are looking like this. Similar to Metro France, really. A lot of areas coming out drier than average. Plenty of dry weather to come, indicative of a lot of high pressure. There is more in way of rain up towards Iceland. That's a long way north. That's probably where the jet stream is. And uh, overall, it does look as though we have quite an anticyclonic dry and relatively warm, but not excessively hot summer. Moving through to July, August, September. Again, the emphasis is on drier than average conditions, quite clearly. So, southwestern Europe, again, from uh, from sort of uh, Spain, Portugal, through France, into some parts of the UK, and then over towards eastern Europe, towards the Black Sea. Again, we're looking at relatively dry uh, conditions then. And then the last dry month, dry monthly period takes us through August, September, October. And once more, we're looking at relatively dry conditions, particularly across western parts of Europe, but also to some degree in the east and through Mediterranean. No signal of autumn rains here setting in at this point. So as we go from the summer into the autumn, things do look quite dry. And then finally, we've got the DWD. So, uh, mean sea level pressure anomalies from DWD for uh, the summer of 2020. This is a bit different, actually. This one has more in the way of higher pressure to the north. These yellow colours are within the northern latitudes. Uh, so, I mean, that could be hints of northern blocking. There's no evident trough of low pressure, but where we've got this white area from here, that could, if we got northern blocking, fill up with a trough of low pressure. So that one could be a little bit more unsettled than the summer, uh, uh, with a higher pressure to the north. Next tri-monthly period goes back really to what we just talked about with the other two models, and we start to get the above average heights building in again from off the Atlantic and going through the UK. And this time going to Scandinavia as well. Jet streams pushing northwards, lots of dry weather involved with that. Uh, and then we go through to the last trimonthly period with the uh, DWD. It's similar to the ECM in a lot of ways. Uh, this is August, September, October. And the high pressure as we go into the autumn is actually intensifying pretty much over the top of the country. So a very anti-cyclonic autumn being signalled here uh, from, um, uh, from DWD, but also from the ECM as well, really. Uh, temperature anomalies for... Uh, for uh, Europe with DWD for uh, summer 2020 looking like that near normal really for northern and western parts of Europe very close to average with the temperature normally there it looks hotter down in the southeastern corner so around the Balkans to the Black Sea does look very hot there temperature normally is like two degrees or more above average so a really hot southeastern uh, European summer but in the northwest again it's not excessively warm in fact uh, we don't really have much of a signal so it could even be a little bit on the cool side we go through to the next trimet period, which is July, August, September, and we see that again, very little in the way of a signal. Many southern parts of Europe, and particularly in the southeast, look quite hot. Northern Europe generally looking close to average or with no signal. And then the last trimet period takes us through to August, September, October. And uh, again, we see that it's just slightly above average across southern parts. It's just a little bit above average from Spain through uh, Med in towards um, the Balkans. So temperature noise over time are cooling down. And much of northern Europe actually is close to average with no signal uh, really in those white colours. So never a particularly warm signal with the DWD for the UK and for Ireland throughout all of this, actually. But there's not much of a signal. It could actually be a little bit on the cooler side. 
And temperature anomalies, well, this is a little bit indicative of what, what I was talking about um, for the summer. Uh, so it's actually slightly wetter than average with the DWD for the UK and for some northern parts of Europe as well. That would be indicative of light northern blocking being up here uh, and then sticking up a trough underneath it around here with the jet stream going a little bit southwards as well. So definitely out of a free, but DWD is the worst for the summer. It's the coolest and also the wettest for the summer. Um, and uh, just hints at something rather on the unsettled side. Let's carry on. And we move through to the next triumph period, which is July over September, with precipitation on is near normal, really for many northern parts of Europe. Not much of a single up there. Much of southern Europe is uh, drier than average. And then lastly, we go through to August, September, October, when it's turning drier than average again in the northwest of Europe and down across France. So this is a high pressure is intensifying as we move through into the autumn. We start to get high pressure building uh, much more strongly then. Things start to uh, settle down. And um, yeah, looks like we have quite an anticyclonic period as we go through into the autumn. So, uh, quite an interesting update uh, from the uh, from the uh, models tonight uh, or today. Um, it's tonight when I'm recording the video, of course. Um, quite an interesting update. DWD definitely the coolest and most unsettled of all of the models for uh, for the summer, but then it builds in the high pressure as we go through into the autumn. The other two models don't look too bad at all, really, for the summer. A lot of dry weather on offer. Temperatures never excessively warm, but pleasant um and then let's go through into the autumn uh, if anything the models particularly the ecm as well as the dwd once we intensify that area of high pressure really start to build it up uh from the uh, south and uh, we so by turning it through into the middle of the autumn we are well and truly under high pressure it's all speculation and it's all just for fun so uh don't take it too seriously um and uh of course we'll be doing it all over again next month the next month's update will take us right way through the rest of the autumn we go through to september october november uh with uh, with next month's update uh, so, well, that's it for this uh, video. Um, now, these models will form part of the third and final season one around up for summer of 2020. And we'll be releasing that on Saturday, next Saturday. Then the day after that, 31st of May, that's when we'll be releasing the Gavs or Weathers.com summer 2020 forecast. So, uh, we're pretty much at the end of the journey to summer now. And you'll find out next week what we're predicting for the summer of 2020. Don't forget to check out uh, the uh, Gavs on the Sunday Roundup and also Summer Analogs. That Analogs update will be placed on the Summer Updates page at gavsweathers.com with, with a written forecast uh, this evening. We're live streaming in a couple of hours, live streaming from 5 o'clock. Uh, so uh, we'll see you then on YouTube, but we're bending it through to gavsweathers.com and also showing it on our social media pages. Among all of the other things that we're doing about live stream, we will be looking at the Beijing Climate Centre uh, long range model for the winter of 2020-21 so that should be quite an interesting watch i think okay that's all for now though and thanks for watching